Uh, this is going to be a, a similar demonstration to what I'll be doing outdoors, plein air, at my uh, workshop at Campbell River on Vancouver Island this May. Um, I just want to draw a silhouette of all these trees. I don't want to draw any single trees. I've drawn a, a I used a ruler to get a horizon absolutely straight. I just want to scribble a few little uh, bits in here so I remember with the painting I'll go over and glaze a few trunks on top just to get a bit of depth into that. And I'm going to put these tide pools And that's, that's about all the drawing I'll do. Here's some of the places we'll be on that workshop. The great, uh, great subjects to paint in plain air. And uh, the odd boat. Oh, and you can fish if you don't want to paint. It's a, it's a wonderful spot. Um, this 200 pound paper rag paper, of course, just taped down with masking tape. It's a quarter sheet, 11 by 15 inches, so I don't really need to stretch it. it might ripple a little bit. There's uh, my website if you want to join us on that workshop. May 9th, I think it starts, 2016. Now, I want to put down a little bit of um, burnt sienna just to kind of warm up the sky. Just to, I don't want the sky to be a real bright blue. Because it'll, I think it will be too distracting. Yeah, I might be wrong with that, but it's... Uh, I always like to get a little bit of variation in the blue sky. So I'll add cobalt to the burnt sienna and just a little more cobalt. I get closer to the top. I like to keep the top a little darker overhead so your attention kind of gets uh, directed down towards the light spot in the center. And boy, you can see how wet the paper is. It's just, it, the pigment is just kind of flooding as it goes on. Just carefully making sure it. Uh, It's drying enough so that I can uh, can even darker wash going in top, but I want it to blend smoothly. Just I just keep adding a little more blue to that combination, and because there's burnt sienna in it, it goes that gray blue gray color. I'll use a bit more blue here, and it's just dry enough to hold this edge up nicely, I think. Yeah. Now I'll let that dry. That's a place that's very similar to where, what I'm working from here, except the tide was out, of course, in this shot. Oh, and we'll see a few of these guys around, I'm sure, and a lot of bald eagles. For your photo pleasure. Oh, now the top's dry, and I want to uh, wet the bottom exactly the same way. Stay away from that wash on the top part. Just let it be even, and uh, don't overwork it too much. It's easy to scuff the paper when it's wet. If you brush too much, Yeah, that should be enough. Now I'll just go in with a bit of a burnt sienna, kind of match up a little bit of the color that I was using in the sky. Add a bit of blue to it. I'm going to forget what is, what's water and what's sand here. I won't be putting the reflections in until after this is 
dried. Just kind of try and set the stage for that. There'd be lots of uh, boats in the marina if you're a boat painter. And lots of driftwood on the beach too, so endless supply of uh, subjects there. Now I've mixed a bit of, of ultramarine blue because I need to get a bit darker. And I've added a bit of burnt sienna. So I get a bit of a, you know, a nice combination, warm, cool, dark grays for the sand in the foreground. I'm not going to put much detail into it. And that's a pretty dark brush load there. I may lift a bit of that off later. I'm not worried too much. It'll come up fairly easily if it's too dark. Uh, Ultramarine comes off pretty easily, even though it's it's got some burnt sienna in it. Now I'm going to paint right over these rocks for now. Same combination of uh, colors here, burnt sienna and ultramarine. Now, clean brush. It's just damp. It's not totally dry. A little bit damp so that it absorbs. It just moves that paint off that top edge so it's not quite so dark. And I'm going to let this dry. And just like I drew the, the trees in with a single silhouette line, I'm going to paint it the same way. Just mix uh, different brush loads. I've got, I'm switching now to uh, burnt sienna with a bit of phthalo blue because it'll tend to go a bit slightly greenish in the dark areas. Put a bit of burnt sienna on the beach here where the sand and rocks are in the distance. Bluer there, but uh, so I'm really just drawing in the the outline of the trees where it meets the sky, and just letting the rest of it go. I keep switching what the the amount of paint. Sometimes a little more burnt sienna, sometimes a little. Or thalo blue. It's about a number 10 or 12 round brush. Now, here's another little technique with an oil painting brush. You can just kind of stab it if you want to get a bit of a uh, fussier kind of texture. The only th I don't do much of this. The reason is you, once, you, once you get a little bit of a evergreen edge there you have to sort of draw in with a small brush to connect the little bit so it looks convincing otherwise it looks like you just stabbed it with an oil painting brush it's a little more drawing requirement i don't mind in this part of the picture because this is in the near the center where i want your attention to go towards the high contrast and a little more detail. I'm not going to go all over the whole area like that, but we'll put in a few tree trunks. Um, and as soon as you start to layer it a bit, it gives it some depth. You can start seeing in between the trees and tr 
three trunks. And it's just the power of suggestion. I'm not really drawing a whole lot of individual trees, just a little you know, parts of them. And just kind of let them fade. Power of suggestion. And I'm going to put a bit of paint on these rocks, just on the Well, I've got that little brush going here. And you just smudge that. And it takes time to do these little bits, but uh, I don't want to overwork it, but I want it to um, look convincing. So I'm about halfway done at this point. And I'm going to take some masking fluid. It's all dry now. Whole paper, and I'm going to paint over these rocks because I want to be able to ignore them when I come to paint the reflections, dark reflections behind them. So I can just work right on top of these rocks after this masking fluid is dried. It looks like this brush is going to get thrown away now. I take a flat brush, about a half inch flat. And I had a ruler just to run my knuckles on to keep keep a straight line. And I want this dry brush texture. I want it to kind of skip along over the water. I'm using uh, burnt sienna with a bit of ultramarine, or uh, sorry, a bit of uh, fallow blue now, because I want the a bit of a greenish tinge. But I can go right over top of these rocks. It's just this coarse type of reflection where the wind has caught the water just a little bit. And uh, it's given me this sort of pattern. It takes a bit to, to get this brush to just do what you want it to do, not to put not to lay down too much paint. Or to lay down enough so that it gives you that texture and you just keep doing that until you get it and, and it's a bit too busy right now I want to just fill in some of the whites do a little retouching here And finally, just add a little bit of uh, cast shadow where the sun comes through these trees. And that should, that should just about do it.